Hey everyone. So the goal of today's video is to help you to be able to accurately draw contour lines on a field of elevation values. In essence, we want to be able to create our own topographic map. Now, in my last video, we took a look at what exactly topographic maps are, what are contour lines, index contours, contour intervals, map scales, compass rows, and a few other features of uh, topographic maps. Now, if you're still a little bit iffy on the basics, you might want to go back and check out that video before proceeding. But if you're good to go, uh, we're going to continue our look today by learning how to actually create all of these contour lines uh, as we build our topographic map. Now, in order to do that, we we have to go back to some raw data, like I see on this right here. So this is what's called a field. And a field or a field map is a map of an area that shows some data. Now, that data could be anything from temperatures and precipitation amounts to, in this case, we have elevation values. So uh, just to kind of look at the map, we have an area with a stream, and we see Bethany Lake there, and this large area of land, which is shown in gray. And all over the land, we see these different points with values that seem to range from the 40s up to around 70. Now, on this map, these values all represent elevations. So if you were to go and stand at any one of these points, uh, you would know how high above sea level you are at that spot. Now, as it is right now, it's not terribly useful because the contour lines have not all been drawn in. We see a few of them, the 70, 65, and 60 lines are done, um, but they're not all there, and so we don't get really a good complete picture of what the landscape actually looks like. And so our job is going to be to draw in the remaining contour lines to help make sense of the area. Um, and so when we draw contour lines, we have a few rules that we need to follow, and they're pretty simple. Uh, rule number one is that the lines are going to connect points of equal value, um, meaning all of the 50s are going to connect to each other, the 55s, etc. They're going to connect points that have the same elevations. And the most important part is that these lines are going to separate the higher elevations, the larger values, from the lower elevations or the smaller values. Um, so that's our first rule, and that's kind of the basic idea behind drawing contour lines. Uh, now another rule is that the lines can never touch each other or cross one another. And if you think about it, that's actually very logical, because imagine I had a point where a 55-foot contour line actually crossed over a 60-foot contour line. Well, what that is suggesting is that in that point where they meet, the elevation is both 55 and 60. And, of course, that doesn't make sense, which is why our lines should never touch or cross. Now, they might get very close together or very far apart, but, again, they should never touch. Uh, additionally, the lines should never just end. They can't just stop in the middle of the map. They have One of two things can happen. They either need to run off to the edge of the map, or they need to close back on themselves, creating a kind of a rounded shape of some sort. And that's what we see at the tops of hills and mountains. Um, but again, the line should never just randomly end in the middle of the map. Finally, our contour lines are almost always going to be smooth, curving lines. We don't see a lot of sharp and angular turns in the line. And while it is possible, uh, that tends to only happen in real extreme landscapes. And for the most part, they're going to be curvy, smooth lines. So just keep that in mind when we're drawing them. So let's go back to the map here. Uh, and what I do notice is that our map actually gives me the contour interval. Now, if you remember from the last video, the interval is how much the, there's a change in elevation from one line to the next. So on this map, the interval is 5 feet. So if I look, that makes sense because I see a 70-foot line, and then the next line is 65, and the next is 60. So logic tells me that the next line I'm going to draw, looking at the numbers here, will be a 55-foot line, um, and that is keeping with my contour interval. It would not make sense to do a 58-foot line because that would be breaking the rule that the interval says it should be a 5-foot change with each line. So we're going to proceed by drawing the 55-foot line. Now, the best way to start is to look at your field map and see if you find any 55-point values, 55-foot values. There's one down at the bottom, and there's one at the top. Uh, so I know, according to my rules, that I'm going to essentially be connecting those two points. 
Um, but I also know that I want to separate the lower from the higher. And so if I, before I draw anything, if I just take a look at the data on this map, uh, what I'll notice is that pretty much all the numbers over on the right side near the lake tend to be lower than 55. And all the numbers over on the left side, um, kind of at the, the, the start of the stream, are higher than 55. And so that gives me a sense. I know my 55-foot line should be separating those lower values from the higher values. So now we can go ahead and just start drawing. And again, I'm going to connect those two lines, separate anything bigger from anything smaller. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to start up at the top here, hit my 55, separate bigger from smaller, and hit my other 55, and then run off to the edge of the map. And there you have it. Now you might notice I did something a little bit funny, uh, and that is what happened when I crossed Ames Stream here. You'll notice I kind of bent the contour line. I kind of curved a little bit, uh, pointing uh, away from the lake. Uh, now there's a reason for that. In fact, if you look at the other contour lines, they all have a similar bend uh, when we cross the stream, and that has to do with the shape of the stream bed itself. Um, which we'll be discussing in more depth in a, in a future video. But for now, um, just know that we're going to try and bend our contour lines when they cross a stream or a river, uh, and they're going to bend pointing upstream, so in the opposite direction that the stream is flowing. And again, more to come on that in a future video. Uh, so there's my 55-foot line. It looks good. Uh, now, if I look at the rest of the numbers here, it looks like I'm going to have to do one more line to keep with my interval of 5 feet, and that line is going to be a 50-foot line. So we'll begin by locating any 50s. I see one there, one there, one there, and one there. Um, and again, if I look at this data, what I'm going to notice is that the numbers to the right near the lake are lower elevation and to the left are higher. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and connect these lines, and I'm going to separate bigger from smaller. So we'll get started again at the top, hit my 50, between the 42 and 50, uh, 47 and 52 and off the edge of the map. And you'll notice again, I bent my contour line when it crossed Ames Stream. And so there's my 50-foot line. And so now I have, in this case, a completed, albeit fairly simple, topographic map. So just to kind of review, we have some basic rules. The lines connect points of equal value, and the key is to separate higher from lower values. Lines can't touch. They're not going to cross. They never end. They either have to go to the edge of the map or close on themselves, and they tend to be smooth and curving. Uh, so we'll keep this in mind as we go into our future videos. In our next video, we're going to be looking at how to determine different elevations on a topographic map. Don't forget to subscribe at Mike Samartano on YouTube. And thanks for watching.